Hey guys, so the new graphics cards from AMD are out and they're looking very competitive against Nvidia. In some cases, even beating them, but we want more. So we set out on a mission to see how much more we can squeeze out of this new RX 6800 XT by overclocking it. And the results are actually rather surprising. Stick around and we'll show you what we did to achieve it. Also, if you have not seen our review of RX 6800 XT, I recommend checking it out. The link is in the description below. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. For this overclocking, we focused specifically on 4K gaming, as in both 1080p and 1440p, there's already plenty of performance without any tuning. Let me give you a sneak peek into our results. As you can see, in many games, there's 5 to 10% improvement. Actually, we see similar improvement on productivity applications as well. Not bad at all, right? And as the new RX 6900 XT comes out, I'm sure we'll be able to push it to the same level. Before we get into the details of what it did to overclock the GPU, I want to cover a few different types of performance tuning and also the risks involved. To start, you need to download the latest version of AMD Radeon Adrenaline software and install it. When you open it up, you need to click on the performance tab and select tuning. Here we have three options, presets, automatic tuning and manual tuning. It is important to note, only the preset tab is covered by standard warranty. The manufacturer's warranty does not cover automatic or manual tuning, so use them at your own risk. When we open up the presets tab, we once again are greeted with the three options, quiet, balanced and rage mode. On the quiet mode, the card will have a less aggressive fan curve resulting in slightly lower boost clocks, but also becoming considerably quieter. Balanced mode is the default and rage mode is an interesting one. Here we have the card with a more aggressive fan curve and also it'll bump up the power limit to allow for better boost. AMD claims that with Rage Mode, you'll potentially get a few percent more performance, depending on Silicon Lottery, of course. If you're the really unlucky one, you may actually have no impact at all. Nevertheless, I would recommend turning it on if you're not planning to do any other type of overclocking. Then we have the Automatic tab. The any changes done within this tab are not covered by the warranty. Here we have a few options. Default, which is pretty self-explanatory. Then there is Underworld GPU. This will lower the voltages and potentially reduce your temperatures as well as noise levels. When clicked, it will warn you about possible crashes as well. In my case, this option has reduced the voltage by 25 milliwatts, which is not a lot. Next, we have Overclock GPU. This will automatically push the GPU clock speed slightly higher. In our case, it pushed to 2414, which is basically what we we're boosting to anyway. And finally, there's an Overclock VRAM, which will automatically overclock the memory. Our card actually overclocked to 2150, which is actually the maximum on this card. All of these tools are cool, but they only provide one tweak at a time without any granularity. So my advice is to stay away from them. Let's jump into the real overclocking with the full manual controls. Again, this is not covered by the warranty. Here my advice is to immediately enable power tuning and bump up the power limit to maximum. This does not automatically improve performance, but this will provide us with some headroom. Next is fan tuning. You can quickly adjust maximum fan speed or go advanced and adjust the fan curve. I find that the fan speed under 50% is pretty quiet. Moving to VRAM and GPU tuning. This is a little bit more complicated since it really depends on your card. I recommend setting memory timings to fast and start with the memory speed at about 2050. Do note, high memory speed does not always mean high performance. In fact, in some cases, if you push the memory too hard, you may hurt performance as the card will generate some errors and will need to spend extra cycles to correct for them. Luckily, our card actually performs really well with fast memory. Next, we can tweak the GPU clocks themselves. But before we do, save the preset and do a quick test to see if you may really have some stability issues. It is important to save new presets every time you do a test. This way, you can go back to previous stable settings at a blink of an eye. After a test is done, you can tweak up and test again. I really like the ability to create personalized game overclock profiles. So for example, you can set your global profile to a super low performance mode to save power, as well as keep your PC cool and quiet while you're working or browsing the web. Then you may have a game where you want maximum performance and don't care for the noise. You can set up all the settings to allow for that. When you load the game, it will activate the relevant profile and you're off to the races. We spent a long time testing back and forth and found that the clock speed of 2500 MHz minimum and 2600 maximum with voltages of 1100 milliwatts, memory set to fast timings and maxed out speed, as well as pretty moderate fan curve works really well. Final result will of course vary between different cards. So you may need to go back and forth and see what works for you. 
Talking about results, let me share some of ours, starting with Shadow over Tomb Raider. Here we have just over 6% improvement on both average and 1 percentiles. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we have 10% improvement on average FPS and 11% on the 1 percentiles. This improvement is actually making 4K gaming a bit more reasonable, as you no longer tread on the 60 FPS line. In CSGO, on the other hand, we see no real difference, which is not surprising as we really have crazy frame rates. In Rift Breaker, we have about 2% improvement on average FPS and no change on 1 percentiles. This FPS, unfortunately, is just too low with ray tracing enabled. In Drift 5, we actually gained 9% on both average FPS and 1 percentiles, but we're about 10% short from smooth 60 FPS gameplay, so it doesn't really matter. As far as productivity goes, we actually have a nice improvement in Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve benchmark by Puget Systems. We are now only about 7% behind RTX 3090 at less than half the price. That is really impressive. In Blender, we have managed to even out the score with an RTX 3070 in quick BMW test and shaved off 6 seconds on a longer classroom test. We also have a very interesting observation here. The clock speed throughout the test is staying close to 2600 and as we've tweaked the voltage down and only slightly tweaked the fan speed, we're finding that the temperature is about 10 degrees lower. At the peak of a test, the fans did ramp up and became audible but in no way they were loud. To quickly sum this up, is overclocking RX 6800 XT worth it? Providing you're comfortable tinker with it and have the time, then there appears to be a considerable overclocking headroom. When you pair it with the custom profiles, you can set up great performance per game when you need it and leave it passive when you don't. Overall, I'm pleasantly surprised by all of this and look forward to find out what the RX 6900 XT will bring to the table. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.